Somebody in the comments asked, how do you chrome a key in Final Cut Pro? So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how to do that. So now here in Final Cut Pro, I have a few different clips in here that we're just gonna play around with and experiment with chroma keying so you can see how it's done. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna add a background in here. So I'm just gonna drag this background video clip into the timeline and that's gonna be the background for all of our chroma keying just to play around, just to test things. Now, the most obvious way that you're gonna use chroma keying is when you have like a blue screen or a green screen as the background of a subject and you want to just replace that background with something else. Ideally, you wanna have some sort of a clip like this, right? That's like perfect green screen, that it's lit perfectly and the subject is perfect. And so to do that, we just pull this clip on top of our background here. And then all we have to do is go down to masks and keying in our effects and then search for the green screen keyer. That's this one here. And then if we just pull that on top of our video, immediately it just works really well because the green screen keyer in Final Cut Pro is tuned really well to be able to cut out that green color. You can of course choose whatever color you want, but in this case, it's, it knows automatically to key out the green. It's going to automatically figure that out. And then you would just have to go through and kind of play around with this and make it look better. We'll come back to this particular example in the end of the video so I can kind of show you the final version of this. But this would be the ideal situation when you're going to chroma key because a perfectly lit green screen or blue screen is going to work much better than something that's not as well lit. And you may ask yourself, when do we use a green screen versus a blue screen? Well, that's a completely separate video in and of itself. So if that's something you're interested in, then leave a comment down below and I will make a video about that as well. And like I said, this is the ideal example. So let's take this one out of here. So let's try to take this example here. Now this is a character I used in another video when I was talking about replacing a sky. And a lot of people asked me, why wouldn't I just chroma key out the sky and get rid of it? So let's actually talk about that because I think that's a really good question and it's a really good topic to discuss when it comes to masking versus chroma key. So now if I pull this particular clip over top of the background and I drop my green screen keyer on top of it, you're going to notice something right away. First of all, it works really well up here because this is a specific color up here, right? And it's kind of a similar color all the way until it gets down to about here. And then you'll notice that it doesn't do as good of a job keying the color out. And I'm gonna stop you right there because I know that you're thinking that we can fix this. So stop it. I'm getting to that, stop it. So of course we can fix this, we can make it look a little better. So let me show you how we would do that. So the problem here is that it's not one uniform color from the top to the bottom, right? However, in Final Cut Pro, we do have a nice ability here to sample the colors. And what this allows us to do, it allows us to kind of sample more of a spectrum of color versus a single solid color. So if we choose sample color over here and then we come into the image and let's say we sample from like the top of the sky all the way down to the part of the edge of the sky right there, and then let go. Now it's actually sampled that spectrum of color and the chroma keying is looking much better. However, you will notice something else in here. Now you can see that because this guy here has blue in his pants and in his shirt and he's kind of got blue throughout, that it's actually chroma keying out part of him as well. And if we were to go over here and we were to look at the mat, you can see now that all of the white is the part that is visible and all of the black is the part that's being keyed out. Now, because there's those blue colors in his clothes and in his pants and all that stuff, because that's there, it's also keying out parts of him, which are a problem in this specific example. Now, if your subject and your background and everything else has none of the colors that are in the sky, then this works, right? This will work. If our subject did not have any of the colors of the sky on him or any of the colors within this spectrum of color, then chroma keying would be ideal in this situation. And so to be fair to the people who commented that in the other video, this is a blue sky. It's a pretty blue sky. So chroma keying should work as long as the subject doesn't have those colors in them or in their clothes or the things around them. Unfortunately, in this one example, it doesn't really work that well, but 
conceptually, those people are correct. If you just have a single color, then chroma keying works also to just get rid of the background, right? It's kind of a dance sometimes between what different methods work and what don't. I'm one of those people that believes that there are a million ways to do the same thing, right? And I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that like one specific way is the correct way. I think that ultimately what we're working toward is art, right? This is not always an exact science. Now there are color sciences and things like that. However, this is not an exact science. We're trying to create art, we're trying to create beautiful things. And so I don't necessarily think that there's one right way to do anything. I think it's that there's a lot of different amazing tools available to us now as filmmakers, as artists, as videographers, as editors. And so it's good if we just kind of play around and experiment with all the different tools and see which ones work better for us. Now in the composited version of this specific example, it doesn't work as well, but there, this would totally work if all of my subjects, my road, my background, everything that I wanted to keep in the image did not have the color of the sky. If that was the case, then this would absolutely work. So let's take a look at another example here. This is just the example of this girl here pushing out a phone. And let's see if we can chroma key this out. So we're gonna drop her on here like that. And then we'll take the green screen keyer and we will drop it on here and boom, it works really well. Even though the background is slightly gradient, there is some difference in the color from top to bottom. The chroma keyer here is really good at being able to pick that out and decipher that. Now you can, as I said, grab the sample color. We could just kind of, you know, grab a spectrum of that just to make sure we're getting it all. But this chroma keyer in Final Cut Pro is really good at what it does. I'm definitely impressed by it for sure. Now, obviously this particular video looks weird and awkward, right? Because she's blurry, the background's not, and we could tinker around with this and make it look better. But this is more just an example to show you how quick and easy it is to chroma key. I'm gonna pull in one more green screen clip here and that's this dude just standing in front of a green screen it's got kind of wrinkles in it and it's not quite as perfect so we're gonna import that really quick we'll drop her off of here and then we'll pull him up on top of this as well we're gonna drop the green screen on here and then we'll let it go now you can see that where the wrinkles in the green screen were there's kind of like some wrinkles in the image here so that's where this sample color tool comes in very handy because you can just kind of grab this and go across and it will grab a spectrum of all of those colors and so it much more quickly gets rid of the wrinkles that are in the green screen so just another example of how quick and easy it is to use the chroma key here and now to top this video off i want to go back to our original green screen dude here this get, this is like the prime example right if you are creating a green screen or using chroma key in final cut pro you want to have your green screen well lit far enough away from the character that it's not emitting green light onto the individual also making sure that the character doesn't cast a shadow or anything like that onto the green screen and so this is the perfect ideal version of that so we're going to drag that back here and we'll just clip this off, get rid of that, like that. So now we got kind of the same length, the video and the background are the same length. I'm gonna drop the green screen keyer onto here. And now he actually looks quite good in this shot, okay? And so I'm gonna make him a little bit smaller. So we will scale him down quite a bit, maybe about like there. I'm gonna move him just over here as if he's off to the side. And I'm gonna move him down like this. And actually might scale him up just a little bit like that. Okay, so now he's just kind of over here off to the side. Whenever you're doing any kind of compositing like this where you're green screening somebody out or you've keyed somebody out or you've masked them out, whatever you wanna do, you want to correct the colors of the individual so that it matches the background a little bit more. And so in this case, I think we can just grab one of the color grading presets and I used this one before in a different video, but this kind of desaturate with low contrast, this one works really well in a lot of cases because it ends up making the character more desaturated, which is often what the background video will look like. But it's, again, not always gonna be the case, but in these cases, it seems to work pretty well. And in this example, I'm just going to bring the contrast back up just a little bit because it always tends to overshoot and make it not look quite as good. I think that's pretty good right there. 
Okay, and now we have our character. He's composited into the scene here. I'm just gonna throw a title in here and make it look a little bit more interesting, and we'll put it between the subject and the background so that his arm kind of goes in front of the title for a second, just to make it a little more interesting. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a title. I've got this M title plugin from Motion VFX. Great title plugin if you ever wanna get it. I'm just gonna pull in this Wanderer title here, and I'm gonna place it between the character and the background like this, and we'll move it over to here. I'm gonna actually just kind of slide up in the timeline so I can see where it is. And I'm gonna put it here so that it goes slightly behind his arm like that. And then as it starts to build out, It'll kind of show, he'll move his arm, and then we'll see the title like that. And so this is our final composited example. I'm just gonna render this out and let's take a look at the completed version. So that's chroma keying in Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed that, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you thought that that was cool, check this out.